All right. Hello, everybody. We are doing another interview I'm with Rose Donato, and she's going to be talking about the vegan life and uh, talking about her new book. And I can't wait to hear it. So please tell me your story. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> well, I went vegan for these guys. And about 26 years ago now, I went vegan because I saw like a couple minutes of a Dateline special. This is Willow, by the way. They're going to be probably bothering us a little bit. Sorry about that. They want attention. Uh, so a Dateline special, like five minutes. And that's all it took, really. I uh, Sorry about the squeaks, the toys here. <laughs> A lot of animal lovers. I, I said whoa when I saw it, it was um they were slaughtering cows and I just consciously said I can't partake in that and it was literally only five minutes I couldn't get through the rest of it I talk about this a little bit in the book which I'll bring up a little more um basically they uh, were slaughtering a cow and I turned away, I started crying and I said, wow, how do we do this to these animals? And I said, I'll never eat meat again. And back then, my ex at the time, come here, he was laughing and saying, yeah, right. I'll bet you that you will. And I said, okay, and let's make the bet. And he said, 30 days, you can't go without eating meat. And I said, Sure, okay. I took the bet. I said $50. And when those 30 days were up, I said, cash out. <laughs> give me my give me my $50. And he literally wrote a check and I cashed it. And I said, I did it 30 days. I don't need to do it ever again. I, I didn't feel right about it. Ethically, it was morally wrong. I think everyone knows deep down that it's it's not it's not right. And let me let me ask you this, Jeff, and for whoever is watching. If you can, if you can live your life compassionately and healthy without harming or hurting any other life, why wouldn't you? That's, that's the main question. So that's what I ask people. And some people are just like, I don't know how, or I'm not aware. That's what, what started me with the book. People were writing me, you know, what do I do? Because I do vegan nutrition. It's one of my jobs and fitness training mainly. So they were asking me, how do I transition vegan? I need to eat better. You know, I know it's wrong, da, da, da. So I got all these messages and I just honestly don't have time to reply to every single person that, that writes. So I try to though, I, I do try to be fair and, and get to people if, they, if they're genuinely asking something and I think that I can, can help them. So I said, wait a second, why can't I write about this and write about my experiences and write about what I've been through to help other people. And of course, to help animals. First and foremost, the animals. And then I started writing, that was three years ago. And I, I literally put a, a, a lot of work into this book and there's a black and white version and a color version. I recommend the color version. You can see the pictures really what they're supposed to look like. I don't know if there's a glare here, like the color looks better, like it's the black and white. Yeah. And I picture, same one, like just so you can see the difference. The color looks better. Yeah. Um, so I put a lot of work into it. I went to, uh, I certified nutrition through Cornell. So I went to their school and some of the top doctors that are writing like the, the best documentaries out now, like What the Health and uh, Forks Over Knives, um, those doctors that I, I've studied with at Cornell. So I did a, put a lot of research into it. So it's not just like my opinion. People are like, being vegan is opinion. It's, it isn't. There's a lot of scientific data and um, clinical trials and facts that go, I, I put in the book that will give you evidence telling you how eating plant-based is better for you. I don't know if you, did you see the, the latest one, um, the Game Changer? That yeah. James Cameron uh, directed and produced, I believe, and Arnold was in it, even though he's not a, a true, real vegan. He did basically say, uh, eat plant-based, that it's better for you. As an athlete, they did like, so, so my book, Beginner, uh, Noble, v Vegan Fitness for Beginners, 
it's on Amazon, it's on Books A Million and it's on uh, Barnes and Noble. It tells you how being vegan, it tells you a lot of things, how to go vegan, why you should be vegan, how it makes you a better athlete and how it makes, your, makes you better with your active life, which is what get the game changers, that documentary, which I recommend you watch, tells it has like athletes on a football team and it has them going to uh, trials and th they test their blood work and actually, funny part i'll tell you about they do um they test them it's not me i'm just telling you what the, what it doc, the documentary shows it shows how a meat eater and a non-meat eater a vegan how long they have, can uh, maintain a heart on <laughs> mm -hmm. so they do this test on the documentary to show who has who can have a, a bigger heart on no, i'm not joking or in it and it stay longer so and of course who do you whose penis do you think had a longer uh bigger heart on let, let i'll let you guess well, i'm assuming the vegan one right very good <laughs> very good there's motivation for you for all you men out there if anyone's listening <laughs> <laughs> but i think that was pretty cool that they did that when you started it were there a uh, big uh physical changes you notice like I heard that some people when they come off of it they kind of you know off of meat or something they they feel kind of sick or they feel you know there's like some kind of change their no. body has to go through and adapt to did you feel anything no the only people that do that are people that stop eating meat and just aren't eating right they're going to junk food they're like eating Twinkies and uh I don't know that's not even vegan a Twinkie but they're they're eating, that's vegetarian. The, the, uh, Twinkies still use butter and, and egg, I think, and milk. But let's say they're just eating junk food, like potato chips and whatever, and french fries. And they're like, well, am I unhealthy? I mean, well, you're eating greasy food and you're not getting enough nutrients. So you want to make sure, and I talk about that in my book. Here, I'm going to keep talking about my book here. Really? That yeah. you're getting the, the right amount of nutrients and that you're getting the proper amount of macronutrients. So... And I talk about macros and I break it down, your carbohydrates and proteins and your fats. So you understand how you need to eat. So <clears throat> if you're taking away meat, all meat really gives you is protein. You just replace it with a plant-based protein. So <clears throat> you have to understand that meat doesn't really give you any uh, antioxidants, doesn't really give you many vitamins or, or minerals. So people are like, I, I went off meat and then I, I felt sick. I'm like, what were you eating? Like you weren't eating... Because people, they're so restricted to their, I don't know what people eat, a pork. So they're, I want to say pig, cow, and, and a fish. But you guys call it burger, steak, and I call it what it is. It's an animal. So you guys are so restricted to like those four things that you're eating, the fish, the chicken, the, the pig, and the cow, whatever you want to call it, pork, and uh, beef. It's cow. It's it's dead cow. So basically, you're restricted to those things. And then when you take them away... You don't know what else there is to eat. You guys should be eating all along the fruits and the vegetables, the grains and the, the, the seeds and the nuts. So you, people don't know what to do and they stop eating that. So even me, 26 years ago, I was like, what do I do? Because I was so used to the chicken and the turkey that I was like, what do I eat? So I literally started just eating bread and rice. And I'm like, uh oh, this is good. I didn't feel sick, um, but... I did get, this is 26 years ago, I did notice there's too many carbs and I was gaining weight. I wasn't eating enough. Uh, I wasn't balancing my macros. And I talk about that in the book. So as soon as I figured out how to do that, I lost the weight and I was okay. So um, you just gotta, if you're taking away the protein, the, the meat, you just find another protein. And now what's great today is that there's plant-based, there's, excuse me, uh, faux meat. So there's, there's plant-based meats. So I don't particularly like go out of my way for them because it remind me of like a dead cow. I don't really want to have in the, the, the burgers, they have the uh, beyond burgers and the impossible burgers. The beyond burgers are so real. Like they kind of make gag me. I don't really want to eat a dead cow. You know what I mean? But I think they're great. And I talk about that in my book too, for people transitioning and people that are, um, that crave that they want to have that burger taste. I like the veggie burgers that have veggies in them, like corn and peppers and uh, black beans and stuff like that. I like those types of veggie burgers much, much better. So 
you it's pretty easy today to be vegan because there's there's everything that you could think of everything pepperoni meatballs in a vegan version the cheese which was the biggest problem that i had transitioning so right off the bat i gave up all the meat but the cheese not right away i had to wean off the cheese and literally once i i researched and somebody really yelled at me it was hard it was a hard yell in my face like why are you still eating cheese like you understand that's abuse still to the animals, they, they slaughtered the baby cows, so you get the milk. It hit home. That's why I take the approach in this book, No Bull. I'm very sassy and I'm very blunt like that because 26 years I've been trying to be sweet, talking to people. Please be vegan. You should be vegan because I, I kind of give it to you tough in this book, and I and I and I, I don't sugarcoat. So I, because I wanted to sink in home with people. If you read this book and you're, you don't go vegan, I'm like. What's wrong? Is something wrong here or here? Because I went vegan here. A lot of people will go vegan because once you read here, I talk about all the health reasons, environmental reasons, spiritual. You ask changes. I felt good changes. I felt like I wasn't ingesting fear, the animals' fear, and the death. They they know they're gonna die. I mean, they, these animals have feelings just like we do. They just don't speak in English language. They still speak like they bark. You just heard them barking. They're speaking. They're meowing. They chirp. Birds chirp. They speak, they just don't speak the way we speak. It's not fair for us to think they don't have feelings. And in my book, No Bull, I talk about and I prove you how they have feelings, how they're sentient beings. Sentient means how they have a conscious, how we do. Plants don't. People go, plants have feelings too. Plants have not been proven to have a conscious. So animals have. And I talk about that too. Because it's an annoying excuse that I've been hearing for years and years. Well, Plants have feelings too. Oh my God, it's so annoying. Well, guess what? If you're eating meat, you're still eating more plants because the animals that you had to eat were eating all the, all the, they're grazing on plants. So it doesn't make sense when people say that. I'm like, oh, do you know what's what all those, it takes a lot more plants to feed that cow than you could have just had direct. And you get your protein direct when you go right to the, to the plant. Like, why are you going to go third party and, and, kill an animal when you don't need to it doesn't make sense so mm -hmm. i don't know i talk a lot so yeah, <laughs> i'll give you some brief i'll give you some uh some time to ask me a question instead yeah. of me talking <laughs> well no, no worries that's a good way to look at it you know cut out the middleman which is the animal but are there any uh grocery stores or can you find all these uh vegan ingredients everywhere are there some grocery stores you recommend to go to uh, also, do you do any like any restaurants you want to plug that you like that are in the LA area? Because this is a LA based kind of interview. Um, and then also, uh, are you heavy on the vitamins? Do you, do you do you take a lot of vitamins stuff like that? Yeah, and I talk about that too in the book. See, I cover a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't really believe in supplements. I believe you can get all the nutrients that you need when you eat properly. So mm -hmm. back, okay, listen back. You got to think like how we we were created back in like the Roman times when you had those Greek gods and those beautiful Roman men. They didn't take supplements. They didn't have vitamins. There's no such thing. They just ate natural. It was mostly plants. People are like, they're hunters. No, it's much easier to grow plants and to go kill. It. Especially if you don't need to kill an animal, you don't kill an animal. So, and nowadays we have so much variety and we have grocery stores. Then there are grocery stores back 2000 years ago is another I try to get all these myths and all these uh, excuses and I try to debunk them in this book sure. the, the grocery store let me answer your question I, I like um, Whole Foods is always the best has the best option there are a couple of little vegan grocery stores that are starting to happen like I just saw in Orange County there's a, a, a convenient seven vegan market I think it's called they're opening like this week which is cool like a little convenient store like a 7-eleven but it's all vegan which is amazing there's another little vegan grocery store it's in hollywood oh my god pear veggie paradise i can't remember the name but you could probably google it um the there's a lot of really cool la is cool for having a lot of vegan restaurants i have to say that if you but listen if you don't have if you don't have access to like if you live somewhere you don't have all those restaurants just cook i do a lot of cooking but you can order, there's there's websites that will do vegan. I talk about this too in the book. Vegan food delivery. Uh, there's websites that do vegan grocery. Um, there's one, get the, 
It's called Get the Fuck Out. It's me. Get G T F O. It's vegan. I think it's the website, and they do delivery, like vegan food. So I mean, just Google it. Like you, we have or whatever search engine engine you want to use, DuckDuckGo, whatever. When I say Google, just get on the internet and use your resources. Look for places. Just type in. There's a Happy Cow app. If you use it, it'll. If you use the app, download the app. It'll show you all the vegan places to go eat that are local to you or or have vegan options. Um, so I do like Whole Foods. Mother's Market is good. Um, I'm not really sure if they Sprouts is okay. If they're there's a couple of them. Mother's Market. I know Sprouts is a chain, but like in Florida, because I used to live in Florida, they don't have Sprouts. I don't think they have Sprouts, but there's a Whole Foods for sure. Whole Foods is everywhere. So I'm trying to take away excuses. And people go, well, there's no vegan place by me. I'm, I'm going to try to open up some vegan places. If I have to do it in Florida, I will. There's a lot in LA, which we got lucky. Their grain cafe is great. They, they literally just opened up like their fifth restaurant. They're down the street for me. I did a little video there. I put it on my YouTube. I'm trying to get, uh, even I I'd, I'd do a TV show if I could cook more or easier for me it would be go to the vegan restaurants like Guy Fieri does his diner drive-in dive show whatever he goes and he promotes like the grossest stuff like ribs sorry but I'm being honest right here it's unhealthy um all this stuff that he's putting out chicken wings I'm like no you're gonna give people heart attack I I don't want to do that I want to help people I want to help animals I want to help the planet so my idea was go get a show and I go all these plant-based restaurants and show how the food is still really really amazing it tastes great you're learning new things you're learning new fruit you're learning new um plants you're learning vegetables like wow what is jackfruit wow what is uh satan do you even know what that is jeff have you ever had satan i want to say i've heard of it but tell me again <laughs> it's it's a vegan protein it's uh if you have a gluten sensitivity which only like is very small percent of the population do that the whole gluten-free it's like 2% of the world have celiac disease. So the gluten-free thing is kind of, I'm not going to say nothing because some people have a sensitivity to it. Um, but uh, Satan has gluten. So, okay. Then you go to tempeh. Have you ever heard of tempeh? Mm -hmm. See, there you go. That's what I want people to learn, open their minds, see what else is out mm -hmm. there. Uh, see what else they can eat. You're, that's why I say you're so limited when you just think chicken. And honestly, it sounds so mean to say, but I'm being honest, it's how I am my book. It's a bunch of brainwashing by factory farmers and politicians put into us for big pharma. You have to eat all these foods, the dairy, the, the chicken, the, the, the beef, these bad foods, and then have full of chemicals, carcinogens, hormones, and you're getting sick. And then who, who profits from that? When you have to go to the doctor, the doctors, the insurance companies, the big pharma, big pharma is giving 80% of the antibiotics just to the cows because they're sick, it's so gross. And then they, they build up um, an immunity and then that we don't have. So you're, we're paying the price, I'm not, but meat eaters. So I talk about that in the book too. And then basically when you guys get sick, cancer, heart disease, you're in the doctor's office and guess who's profiting? Big pharma. Big, it's like they want you guys sick. Big pharma gets, they tell you blood thinner because your, your arteries are blocked. It's all, you get heart disease from, from eating animals. And I talk about that here in the book. Um, at Dr. Esselstein, he's reversed heart disease with uh, Bill Clinton. Who else? Uh, Dr. Bernard, he reverses diabetes with a plant-based diet. So you got all these amazing doctors, world renowned, they're plant-based. Dr. Greger, I mean, he just wrote the book, How Not to Die. He's amazing. Um, so you, you have all these really great doctors doing really great things with, with plant-based diets and plant-based eatings. So I, hopefully I answered the question. Do you asked about the store? Say I can talk. Go ahead. We could also end it with, you, you gave us a, a whole lot of information and, uh, I would like to end it with what are your favorite recipes in your book? Can you name, name us a few or tell us? You know, few. I tried it. I try to give easy recipes since it's a beginner book because I can sit here and make uh, a vegan Italian lasagna, but it takes time and it's a little, a little more tedious than a beginner. I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't put that in the book. I think I put pizza because I love vegan pizza. I put that in and it takes a little longer. It's not on the, the beginner, beginner side, but it's not, it's not a difficult recipe. Um, I mean, there's something to eat. There's stuff so easy. Like who doesn't love potatoes? 
potatoes. Everyone loves potatoes. I think I put home fries in there. You can just slice them differently. I, you can bake them if you don't have an air fryer, but I love my air fryer. Air fryer is amazing. I'm not big on oils and I talk about why, how oils are harmful to our cells. Everyone loves oils. It's another thing I think we're conditioned to think that oil is good for us. It's not. People are like, well, you need the fats. You can get the fats. You get fats always from just eating a nut or eating an avocado coconut. I mean, you have oils already in the foods. You don't need to add it to when you cook. It's, it's, it's not good for your endothelial cells, which are your safeguard cells from heart attack. So we don't need the extra oil. So my air fryer, we can cook, cut the potatoes and make the home fries. But I did the show on the show I was telling you about and Boom, 20 minutes later, you have this amazing, you don't do nothing, just cut the potatoes. How easy is that? So when people go, oh, I, don't, I don't eat vegan, I don't know. Eat a banana, that's vegan. Just make a smoothie. Throw, I like smoothies, I do smoothies a lot, an acai bowl. So to answer your question, I eat a, uh, a bunch of acai bowls. That's, that's a go-to. I put my protein powder in there. You get the acai at Whole Foods. You throw it in the, the blender, it's done in two minutes, not even two minutes. And you could put the toppings of your choice, but granola, some goji berries, whatever you want, boom. Okay. I could sit here and talk all day. I think you're like, <laughs> oh my God, this girl can talk forever. And I move, I do a lot of uh, animated hand motions because that's what the Italians do. Did you ever that's see true. the gangster movies? They're like, I'm, forget about it. They talk that <laughs> way too. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. Uh, we did, a, we said a lot and I, I like it. There's a lot no, to do. Of, so no bull. So my book. No bull. Vegan and fitness for <laughs> beginners. You can find it. You can find it on my website, fitbyrose.com. And you can go on my Instagram, uh, fit, fit by Rose Vegan. And then Plant Strong Body is my other website, which I got together, got ideas to do vegan gear for like athletic gear, uh, yoga mat. Uh, tank tops for the gym, yoga pants, different things that I put on the site to say vegan to spread awareness. When I even when I wear my vegan hats, I always wear like some sort of hat. It strikes up conversation. People will come and ask me, oh, "What is what is? Yeah, wow, you have a you know strong. You're strong. You have a strong figure. You do that without eating eating animals. You do that without eating meat." And I wear that to purposely and I promote it so people that are working out and that are active can also help spread awareness for the animals. I just got this really cute hat. I'm giving these guys a shout out here. Don't eat the homies. So there you go. Don't eat the homies. Cute. You can see it. Yeah. The animals right here. So I thought that was cute. I had it on. So I probably have a hat head. I took <laughs> it off <laughs> when I turned the camera on. I'm like, I don't know if you can see me. If I, I, I wanted to give you a good look at my eyes. So I didn't want to cover my face. <laughs> Much appreciated. You look into my eyes. Say again. It's much appreciated. We got to see the face. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hide from you. And my and my sloth, because I went just went to uh, Costa Rica, Ooh. and a little sloth is here. I, I said, let me wear my little sloth, Pura Vida. I know I'm saying that like a gringo, but a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank oh, you. Man. <laughs> so, any any other questions, Jeff? Are you going to be vegan now? Are you going to get my book? I'm going to look into it. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's a, it's a transition I'm actually doing currently. I like to have the uh, vegan cheese speaking of with the, that's made from nuts and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I personally recommend the impossible burgers for people that Good. are starting off because it sounds, it, I've had it myself. It tastes great. Um, you know, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm transitioning. So you're trying You don't, you wouldn't eat your pug, right? Wouldn't you wouldn't eat, eat your pug. dog. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Pigs are actually smarter than uh, dogs. So it's like, and, and then let's say people, we get mad at the Chinese people or the Asian people over there. They do the Yulin festival, which a lot of people are unaware of, but they eat dogs. They do. They literally, I could show you links. I could send you videos. And, and there's a really good, good guy here, Mark Chang. He's in uh, LA. He goes over and he rescues those dogs. He brings them over to the Animal Hope and Wellness Center. Uh, I follow their page and I really admire that man. He's, he's amazing what he does. He, he's, he gets super emotional, but he goes over there and he tells them, oh, I want to test your meat. And he takes those dogs and he brings them over here. And they go through a lot of rehab because those dogs are being tortured. But my point is, why you wouldn't eat your dog, so why would you eat your pig? It, we look at them like, oh, they're barbaric. They're eating dog. But we're kind of the same. Just because it's not a dog, 
the pig wants to live too. The cow wants to live. Cows are so gentle and docile. We take advantage of them. We take advantage of that. That's, that's not cool. So as humans, we're supposed to be more loving and more helpful to other creatures. We are. And I sound may sound cheesy or corny saying that, but you know, they say you can judge a man's character by the way he treats an animal. And I, you know, we need a little more compassion in the world. So I know I've talked a lot and I've taken your time. And I will leave you at that. But we need more <laughs> good people and good men to help animals. Thank you. Well, no, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. And you, thank you. You taught us a whole lot. Thank you so much, Rose Donato. And everyone look for her book, No Bull. Yes. All the links will be in uh, on my pages and stuff like that. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you.